Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Shots from the Bench. It's only sports talk, and all opinions are both fabulous and flawed. I'm Bob Wiltman. He's Bob Murphy. Russ Jones is on camera, and Greg Malenzuk is behind the scenes keeping sanity. We're here at Margarita Republic at Spanish Springs in the Villages. Margarita Republic, where the food, fun, and fellowship are always first seeds. We're here every Monday from 2 to 3 p.m., so come on down next week and join us. Bring your questions, bring your comments, bring your appetite, and we'll even let you try to stump the panel, but don't get too excited. It's just not that hard to do, but we welcome you to try and do it. And, uh, Bob, before we get started, I want to let you know that uh, a good utility infielder in baseball has no power and usually bats 250. And right now, I have no power, and I'm one for four on pronouncing Greg Malinzuk's name right, so That's I'm right. your That's official right. utility infielder hard. Hard. running the show this week. But uh, let's get right back to it. Uh, Bob, uh, let's start with the NFL. Uh, the undefeated teams were still at six. Any uh, thing that jumped out that caught your eye in the games this week? Well, going into this weekend, uh, we thought the Cincinnati uh, C uh, Seattle game would be the probably one of the best games to see. Yeah. Uh, judging from the first part of that game or three quarters of that game, you wouldn't have thought so because no. uh, Seattle was really taking it to um, you know the Bengals. And so, um, but as the game progressed, uh, Seattle, I mean uh, Cincinnati, just came roaring back. Uh, Andy Dalton had him driving down the field. I know that upsets you a little bit. Doesn't upset me as much <laughs> as I'm always perturbed when somebody blows a big lead as to whether the other team just came careening back mm -hmm. or if the team that took the big lead to begin with just decided yeah. to try to sit on it. And I, I, that's what it looked like to me. Uh, all of a sudden, Seattle had no imagination in their offense, yeah. and uh, defensively, they started letting uh, Cincy move the ball to Cincinnati's credit and. And they deserve a lot of credit. Four, 17 points against that defense in the fourth quarter is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. So you got to give them credit for it. I just hate to see teams change their whole defensive philosophy in right. the fourth quarter once they get a 17-point lead. Right, I understand I that. that. You, know, you play a, a prevent defense at the end when, when you're sacking the quarterback and going nuts the whole game, and all of a sudden you change completely. Yeah. It seems like all the teams do that, too. I, I'm just waiting for somebody to get to the – the uh, situation yeah. where they finally figure, why don't we just do what's been working for three quarters? But That's so right. far, everybody seems to think that, okay, we yep. got a big lead. We don't want to blow it. We don't want to blow it. So let's run the clock out and don't, not make any mistakes. And then now you've made a mistake. All of a sudden, it's a tie game, yeah. and you take it from there. But yep. uh, you're right. That game certainly didn't disappoint. And hats off to the Bengals, man. They're 5-0. 5-0. Seattle and, and, at home uh, is uh, – Can't and, deny what they can do offensively. That's no for sure. No question You know, about Seattle's uh, offensive line seems pretty porous. Um, you know, they're sacking uh, uh, Russell Wilson – Left and right, he's going to run for his life, it seems like, every play. Well, I'm surprised at that, but I guess that they've had a couple injuries. Uh, but yeah. Seattle doesn't look to be quite the same team. They were, it's still yeah. early, but uh -huh. they don't look to be quite the uh, force that they were last year. That could all yeah. change. Of course, the Patriots looked like the Patriots. Patriots. <laughs> uh, they got a little slow start, but they started pouring it on there later in the game. 30-6, they won. And what I like about the Patriots is they don't yeah. – uh, go into a shell. They uh -huh. keep attacking offensively. They keep attacking defensively. Yep. They don't just say, okay, now we're going to let you come down the field. Heck no. They they, they put yep. up a heck of a... I, I just love the way they're coached. I just love the way they play. And Very balanced team. You know, they, oh, unbelievable. The, we both agree, I know, that they're the best team in the AFC for sure. And... Uh, Debatable best team in football, of course, too. Well, there's a lot, of, a lot of other good uh, yeah. undefeated teams, and let's segue uh, to the Packers. Uh, because Before you get into that, yeah. the game when they, uh, the, the Patriots beat, beat, of course, the Cowboys, third yeah. straight loss. Yeah. Third yeah. straight loss uh, to them. Uh, something's got to give there. I mean, after winning the first two games with Romo, and now he's out, uh, now they're down with, with uh, Wheaton, 0-3. Three, oh I think the change needs to come at quarterback. They got Matt Castle sitting in the wings. Well, I guess Why isn't I, this that, the next guy? I mean, they need something. They need a spark. Well, you're right. They do need a spark. But and tell me what you think. I thought I thought Whedon looked pretty good. Uh, no, I know. You know, that, it, you know that they uh, need better than average or better than good. Well, they need that, someone to come in there and really fire that well, ball. If and, Castle you know, can do it, he get him in it. there because I believe uh, he can do it. Yeah, they have they, they have a, a, they have the nucleus in place yeah. to to compete. But you're right that they just doesn't have. Them I mean, they got that great offensive line to protect them and start hauling that you know chucking that ball down the field. 
And uh, like I said, uh, I would just uh, say we're back to the Packers because yes. okay. the Packers always look very, very uh, poised and very, very mm-hmm. solid as a team to me. Uh, I don't think that was uh, Rogers' best game, but uh, one of the passes was deflected. But he still has the the leadership and stays cool under fire because everybody's gunning for the Packers, and they still manage to, to pull out the right. big wins when they need them. Year after year, the Packers are right there, uh, even when their defense isn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, he's always doing it, but I'll tell you, their defense is there this year. They are playing tremendous defense, uh, and you add that to Aaron Rodgers and the receivers he's got and the, and the running game and everything else. It's, it's just uh, they're the team to beat in the NFC, absolutely. Can't argue with that. Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, Atlanta, again, uh, you know, winning in overtime this week. And on a pick six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes you got to win the way you got to win. But so that that one there was a little tough for them to get through. Uh, to go through Washington, especially. I didn't think that would they would give them that good, the tough a game. Well, I you know I give them credit, but I also have to. I, I think that Atlanta's arrived. Uh, yeah. They didn't have their best game, but they mm-hmm. were able to defensively stay in that yeah. game and. Uh, uh, they keep coming back in the in the fourth quarter. Uh, I got to give them credit because I thought they were going to be down and not pull that one out. Yep. And doggone if they didn't do it again, so you just got to tip your hat to them. Yeah, I think that was probably uh, one of the best games. You know, the Atlanta ga- the Atlanta game over Washington, and, and last night the Giants, um, you know, over San Francisco was a crazy game. Did you That's see? It's a fantastic that? game. I yeah. mean, uh, the Giants came back with like one one thirty to go in the game, drove down the field, and. Uh, Took took the lead. That was that was pretty impressive. Uh, Eli Manning bringing them back down after that. So, the Giants, you know, could easily be five and zero. There's they, no they, question. They lost those first two games by just quirky, dumb things that happened. Plus, they came back without, truthfully, their two or three top receivers. They were all right. hurt. Uh, Beckham wasn't in the. They put him in at the end, but he he wasn't. He was just in there to, as a decoy. Yeah. But uh, doggone it, the, the guy that made the catch. The, I can't think of his name, but the guy made a spectacular catch at the end. Uh, he. He, oh my God! The catch was just a spectacular yeah, was, catch. If you haven't seen that, you got to get to go to the highlights because that's that's really, not the really best amazing. catch of the year. That I don't know what it is. It's one of them. So that was absolutely you know. So you know, it's third straight win for the Giants. First and, place now. They're in first place. Well, that's uh, that's what they're striving for, and I yeah. I think they're in pretty good shape right now. And and uh, kudos, to watch out for. kudos to Colin Kaepernick. I, I was all over his case last week. I know. And he, I'll tell you played. what, if he can he can play consistently like he played. Uh, for three and a half quarters uh, last night, and it wasn't his fault at all. The team was yep. that defensively they they let him down, but Carlos had, Hyde was running well as well. For he that had team. he had an exceptional game. So I yeah. you know so much for me dissing on Colin mm-hmm. Kaepernick because he did well, a heck of a well, job. Well, he showed a little bit of improvement, that's for sure. How I'm about, about uh, what do you think about uh, uh, Eli? I don't mean I don't mean Eli. I mean Peyton. Peyton had what probably was <clears> his least <throat> impressive game in the last couple of years. And doggone, they still pull it out. I give I give Denver you know, for that. Of the too. three unbeaten's in the AFC, I, I see them as the th- third and falling. Uh, you know, lo- losing their defense is playing unbelievable. That's what's keeping them in these th- in these games. Uh, you know, Peyton seems to be getting worse. Doesn't it seem like he's getting worse? <laughs> well, yeah, he's too old. You know, yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, he'll, pro- he'll probably like throw for 500 worse, yards worse. next week. Yeah, but, but their uh, defense is really playing well. But you know what? You know, when you match that up to, against the Patriots and uh, against Cincinnati, I, I don't, I don't see them. I see, I can, I see them being the first team to falter, well, start I, to fade I, out. I agree with you. I agree with that. You know, uh, one of the games I wanted to talk to you about also was the uh, Cleveland game against the Ravens, only in the sense that uh, I'm kind of happy for Cleveland, not because they it's beat the Ravens, game. but because it looks to me like mm-hmm. they've developed a pretty good quarterback in this McCown, and uh, we don't have to put up with the Johnny Manziel stuff anymore. Right. Uh, right. Good grief! The guy had a spectacular, spectacular game. So I, I, I tip my hat off to him. And, and I wouldn't say Baltimore's washed up just yet. I keep my eye on them, but uh, that was a big game for. Uh, well, they're coming to play. There's no doubt about that. That's right. You know, they're so. they're not quitting on on any on the season. They're coming out to play, and, and they showed in getting that win yesterday. Well, more importantly, for next week, uh, one of the games I think we had to look at, even though it's not stellar in terms of record is Buffalo and Cleveland. Uh, they both had big wins this past week. That's going to be, uh, I believe it's in Cleveland. And the fact of the matter is uh, 
these are two of the uh, up and coming teams that are really really starting to uh, impress me anyhow because they can play they got yeah. some quarterbacks that look like they have some intangibles and talent and they've got some good defenses they're building on you know in that game uh, when Buffalo in their win in their win uh, over the Titans 14-13 yeah Tyrod 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 Taylor excuse me can't, yes. can't get that out um, he uh, he passed for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, and you know he even caught a pass <laughs> from his wide receiver. And that I mean, he, what more can you do? Well, you the guy tell. is an exciting player. I mean, he doesn't he just makes a lot of big plays, doesn't make a lot of big mistakes. And you are right, Buffalo is on the rise for yeah. sure. I, I see them as a, as a much more improved team. I'm glad to see a lot of these quarterbacks who are great athletes. Anyhow, I, I think it's a great idea for these teams to get them the ball a little bit besides yeah. letting them pass. And obviously, he's got great legs and uh, pretty good hands. So as long as they don't get him killed, throwing him some how about, passes. How about 40-year-old Hasselback? Matt Hasselback with, with uh, Indianapolis filling in and, and playing very well also. Um, and, and along with Frank Gore and get, you know, getting a nice win over the Texans, uh, 27-20, um, Thursday night. As I look at that, uh, if Indianapolis can just keep themselves around 500, I think they're going to win that yeah. division hands down because the other teams just aren't impressing me that much. I guess well, you got right. Houston, you got uh, Jacksonville, and I'm forgetting who else is in there, but uh, they're not real impressive. And, right. uh so I, you know, I'm all, I'm all for, I, I thought get, putting Hasselbeck in was a great move for that team. Yeah. And also, uh, last thing I wanted to talk to you about the uh, NFL is, uh, are the Eagles really going to start to break out? They finally, finally had a pretty good signature win. Yeah, so I, uh, what's, your, what's your take on the Eagles? They look like they're coming to play now? Yeah, it, it, looks, it looks as though they could be breaking out. Um, I know um, they looked really good yesterday, obviously. Um, and so, uh, you know, we'll see. You know, the, some of these teams have a breakout one week and not the next week. But they look really good. Look like the team that we were hoping to see to, be, to start the season, you know, along with the Giants. Maybe they'll be the two fighting it out. Well, they had the big hype, and I'm glad to see it. It's going to make for an exciting uh, division, especially if Romo comes back. you got the Eagles, you got the Giants, you got the Cowboys fighting it out. And even the Redskins are staying in these games. They didn't win, obviously, yesterday, but uh, mm -hmm. they've, got, uh, they've got the makings of a pretty strong, evenly yeah. balanced division. And I'll tell you what, uh, we're ready to take a little break in the action. We'll be right back after this. Amen. We are back here at Margarita Republic for the second quarter of Shots from the Bench. And we're gonna take a segue into the sport I love the most to talk about, even though it's uh, football season's in full swing. I am a baseball nut aficionado, and the playoffs have all uh, finally arrived. Uh, as a quick note, uh, we discussed last uh, week who was gonna do the uh, move up from the Pittsburgh and Chicago uh, contest, and uh, we didn't think that Pittsburgh could uh, bunt the ball out of the infield against Darien, and they didn't. No. Uh, he came awesome. in, went into their field, yeah. 12 strikeouts, no walks, couple hits, uh, ho hum. Uh, and he's on to uh, he's going to be pitching uh, today with, and the, that series is at 1-1 with uh, St. Louis and Chicago. I'll be interested to see how he and Walker do uh, duel against each no other. No one else has been able to touch them yet, right? No, <laughs> amazing. So, uh, well, yeah, that's going to be interesting for sure. Um, the uh, thing I want to talk about is the play. Okay. Everybody's talking about it. Well, I'm I ready. Mean, so I why, why shouldn't we? All right. <laughs> I want to talk about it. But, I just um, got to make sure I know which one you're talking about. I think well, I it's the only one. it's the only one anyone's <laughs> talking about. It's uh, Saturday night, Dodgers-Mets, seventh inning. Mets winning 2-1, one, one out. Uh, again, runners first and third. The Mets had just made a pitching change from t from uh, Noah Syndergaard, the starting pitcher, put a couple of runners on, and the brought in Bartolo Colon, 42-year-old okay. Bartolo <laughs> Colon. He's been well traveled, and uh, I can't even I wouldn't be able to give you all the teams he's played for <laughs> over the years. However, the situation: first and third, one man out, ball goes up the middle to the second baseman playing behind uh, second base. Uh, runner, Chase Utley, running to, running to uh, second. Uh, the ball is flipped to Ruben De Tejada. Uh, and as he makes a pivot, he's taken out by Utley, uh, which looked very violently, by the way. And, uh, and just, he got injured very badly, broke his fib yeah, fibula. I 
broke his leg, basically. And, uh, and that is a play that has been going to be talked about for years. Um, so at, as it transpired, uh, they first called Utley out because they felt Tejada's foot was on the bag. So that would have been the second out. And then they were dealing with him on the field and you know, put a cast, uh, pump up cast around his leg and hauled him out. In the meantime, the umpires uh, well, at, were asked by Don Manningly, the manager of the Dodgers, to uh, review the play. So now it's in review. The whole play is in review, which, by the way, is, is not supposed to happen on a neighborhood play yeah, in it's baseball. A non -reviewable it's a non-reviewable play. It's a non-reviewable play. So it's going at, that's one thing. So then it's going on, and they review it, and they notice that Tejada didn't touch the base. So they award Utley second base and take that out off the board. Okay. Which is driving people crazy yeah. because, because ne neither did Utley touch the base. He didn't touch the base either. So he's running in. But the main problem, so anyway, they should have had the second out. The Mets went ahead and got another out right after that, the second out. But that's when the fireworks started with, with uh, you know, Adrian Gonzalez getting a double down the line and, and other, other things. They scored, uh, four, wound up scoring four runs in the inning, mm -hmm. and they wound up winning the game. So my question for you is, yeah. should, have, should the, uh, that have happened? Uh, should have been handled differently? Uh, could, have been, could have been handled differently? Well, was it I a mean, blown call? Yeah. Now, first of yeah. all, if it's a blown call, it's an umpire's. It's, umpires make mistakes all the time, and if it's not a reviewable thing, there's not a thing you can do about it. Right. Now, I was a bit uh, perplexed only in the sense that they seemed to think it was okay, and then a day or two later, they came out with a suspension of Butley. And uh, I'd like to throw that out to anybody, uh, any of well, our folks sitting in here. Uh, any opinions on that play? Did anybody? I agree. Uh, what, I, what he I, just said was, or what, thank you, sir. Okay. So what he just said was, Utley didn't even make an attempt to hit the bag. Now, that's supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. He's supposed to slide to the bag and then take out, the, if, if, you're, if your infielder is there, then you can slide up into him and take him out if you want. But you're not supposed to, there's a rule in place in Major League Baseball that if you leave the base path and go after the infielder, you're, you're supposed to be awarded, the, t the defensive team is supposed to be awarded a double play. I agree with you, and I'm not, I'm not saying <clears> you're wrong, but I'm taking a look at it from the umpire side. Who interprets the rule? Yeah. The umpire? Yeah. The umpire had a chance to interpret the rule there, and he didn't do it. Right. So well, that's what it came down to. It might be yeah. a blown call. It might have cost him the game. Yeah. But, uh, and, I thought, and I saw it one play. It, it, I would call it a, uh, a dirty play, but... Uh, all I remember well, when, you know, I play, when I played, they used to tell me to break up double plays when I was in high school. I mean, whatever all, you do, don't let the guy right. double get the double play. I realize all these infielders are trained and, and, and sure. yeah, to take out the, not take them out and hurt them like this, but take them out to stop the double play. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's a good play, nothing wrong with that. But there is a rule in play, and they need to enforce it, that if you leave the base pack path to... Uh, he, there wasn't a slide. It wasn't a slide tackle. It was just a tackle. Yeah, it was. I, you know? I'd say it was a dirty play. Yeah, and so <laughs> that needs to be taken care of right then and there. Again, yeah. though, but if once it's come and gone, yeah. uh, once I, it's come I, and gone, then you then you got to take a look I, I at it. I think baseball loses its uh, credibility right. a little bit when two days later they come out and say, "Well, we're going to suspend right. them." I have nothing against the suspension. I mean, the situation it for the Mets. It would have been nice if they would have called yeah. it the right way when it happened. The That's situation <laughs> for the Mets. Could have easily been a win. Oh my gosh! I mean, yeah. they were, they had they would have had one out if Utley was out, and then they they wind up getting the second out, the third out anyway, right? Which they made the second out, and so you know, of course, they could have won later on in the game. You know, it's possible, but they would have had a chance to go up two nothing in that game. So it's a it's an interesting tonight's game is going on in New York with uh, Matt Harvey pitching. So it's, it's definitely increased the viewership of that, that series, that's for sure. I would think that uh, everybody's <laughs> going to be least. watching to see if Utley comes up, what's, uh, what's going to happen there. It should be very, right. very interesting. Right. But let's talk about the other, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, other things going on. The, right now we're watching it's 2-2 in the Houston and Kansas City game, and Houston's got a 2-1 lead over Kansas City. Right. That's somewhat surprising. Watch uh, out Kansas City. Yeah. Uh, Kansas City pulls us off. they got a game five coming up. But... Yep. Uh, these are the teams. Uh, KC was the, uh, you know, the consensus best team in the American League, and yep. uh, 
they're on the brink, uh, well, on the precipice of getting knocked out. Well, I'll tell you, like we talked earlier, uh, you know, anything can happen in these short series. Yeah. Anything can happen. You can have a team. The best teams don't always win the series. It's it's just uh, whoever's hot and who's, who's ever going to, you know, in that particular short, you put out your best two or three starters, and usually you have a five-man five, five rotation during the season, and uh, it just makes the team a different team. Well, You're dealing with a different team. Well, and ask, ask Toronto. Toronto uh, was knocking the cover off the ball the last month of the season. Mm -hmm. Now they're on the precipice of getting knocked out. They're yeah. they're down two to one to Texas, and Texas is uh, playing with a great deal of confidence right now. And uh, Toronto, I don't know if they have anybody that they can go to that they can make. That's a lockdown pitcher that can stop the yeah. other team. They've got some good ones, but uh, I, I kind of like Texas now, uh, up two one. I think that yeah. uh, they they're looking uh, mm -hmm. like the team to beat now. Uh, it seems that way to me too. I would agree with that. So you've got the, you've got uh, from baseball standpoint, the St. Louis and Chicago one one, Mets and the Dodgers one one. So uh, both a long way to go there, but uh, I agree with you. I think the Mets Dodgers game with the uh, after the Utley incident should be somewhat interesting. I think uh, yeah, the viewership on that game somewhat. is going to go up uh, immensely because there's not a person well, you know, that doesn't have an opinion of that slide, and uh, it's tough. It's tough to watch it and be uh, you yeah. know say, oh well, that's just baseball. As a Mets, it was a little beyond that, I think. <laughs> that's, that's, true. that's true. As a Mets player, you got to you got to control your emotions tonight. Yeah. You can't allow this situation. You can easily be a pitcher and throw it, throw it somebody. You can easily be a, a runner and try to take out their now, second baseman. But what good's it going to do? Tonight's you? not the time you to do it. You cannot do that. Next year, next year when you play you're in, here to in win May, the game. in May, you can retaliate that's if you right. want to. But that's don't right. do it while you're in a small series. That's right. I think you that's keep the poise situation. In this under fire. And. Uh, Moving out of the baseball realm, and let's uh, let's talk a little bit of college football. Not a whole lot happened this past week, except except the Florida Gators bombing Missouri 21 to three. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I keep, think I think they've opened some eyes now. They keep proving themselves, don't they? Yeah. They keep proving themselves every week. You know, they say, oh well, maybe maybe the the win over Old Miss was a fluke. Maybe. Let's see how they do against you know Missouri, which is a you know, a two time. South Southeast Conference East champion, very solid so, you know, football with, a, team. with a history of winning, and and they go over there and they they spank them, twenty one to three, um, was the final. That's a spanking. Uh, There's six no question and about it. And then of course the the big game coming up for the Gators is LSU. That is going to be a game. That'll be the, that's um, that's one that I would pay money to see. I think that's going to be. I think the, a, the Florida defense against the running back of uh, for that of uh, LSU to see to see if they can stop him. No one's been able to stop him yet. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, yeah. So what does the crowd so, think about so the LSU? Yeah, uh, for every, we got some LSU fans out there? What's what? <laughs> Just anti-Florida fans. All okay. Right. Uh, I'm, we're starting to find but, uh, a lot of those here. <laughs> yeah. well, that, you must be a Seminole <coughs> fan. What do you think of the Seminoles? Huh? No, well, they're 5-0. Uh, they're 5-0. That's a baseball team, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they're 5-0. No problem with that. Um, <laughs> Three, Michigan. What? What Michigan is that? Is, is, really is that Mid American Conference? Jim Harbaugh has really made a difference. <laughs> is that from Michigan? Wait a minute. Uh, Ohio State. Wait a minute. When did you play for Ohio State? Not true. I, when, a guy I played uh, high school football again was in the starting backfield when they were the national champs. 1970, it would it'd be 72 to 75. I don't know which year. His name's Brian Bashnagel. Okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Wait a minute. With I'm talking about the team with Rex Kern and Brockington and 68. Now nah, that. Oh my gosh, I, I can't even tell you. But uh, we're wrapping it up. Okay, Is, we down to one minute. Okay, well, folks, uh, we've gotten a lot of good information from the folks here at uh, Marguerite Republic, and I'll tell you what, we'll be back to talk about more things like the President's Cup and some of the quirks that are really bothering me going on in professional sports when we come back.